Welcome to my shop. Shall we have a look around? What's up everybody? My name is Tim and this is my workshop. If this is your first time here, I would love it if you subscribed. So I've had a few people in comments, uh, you know, request a shop tour. And uh, as a YouTube viewer myself, I always love shop tours. So figured I'd go ahead and do one. Um, my shop is like a lot of you out there. It's a two car garage, probably a little on the small side of a two car garage, but it's about 479 square feet, mainly thanks to this bump out back here. If it wasn't for that, it'd be pretty tight in here. We'll go ahead and start the tour on this little bump out area. Cause this is kind of where my whole YouTube woodworking journey began. Uh, it was, let's see here would have been the end of 2016. Uh, I had moved into this house uh, the previous spring. I wanted to start doing some home improvement project and I didn't have a ton of tools, didn't really have any place to put a ton of tools. So I said, okay, uh, I'm just gonna start by making a little workbench. There was a gross, disgusting cabinet back here that uh, I ripped out. In doing that, I thought, well, it'd be nice if I had some more lighting in here. So I installed some outlets. And then got on YouTube, started looking around for a workbench design that I could build. So I just built this really simple workbench. And that just kind of got me hooked on watching woodworking videos on YouTube. So ever since then, I've just been kind of, you know, threw myself into woodworking. And then when I built my assembly table later on that year, I was like, hell, I'll film it. My buddy has a camera. I'll see what it's all about, see if it's hard. And it up there if someone likes it they like it great it's gotten decent response so i decided to start doing more of them now as you can see that workbench is no longer there uh, it has been moved over to this wall over here and this area has become kind of where i put my tools i don't use a ton but have easy access to them so there's my jointer uh my little dust collection cart and some metal working stuff i also use it for plywood storage it's big enough to put four by eight sheets so it keeps it out of the way it's a pretty good spot for stuff uh, right to the left of the plywood storage right there is my sub panel that i installed in the garage um the first nine months or so i was working in here really the only outlets that i had were these ones on this back wall that i installed and it was really annoying having to constantly run extension cords and i knew i was going to be adding more machines and um, eventually, you know, 220 machines. So I decided to install a sub panel and along with that, a ton of new lights and a bunch of different circuits uh, on each side of the shop. I have two 20 amp circuits. So four total that allows me to kind of, you know, if I, I can have multiple things plugged in over there and it's not going to trip the breaker. The sub panel install was really fun actually it was one of my kind of favorite projects that i've done i i started filming it it got to the point where i was scrambling to try to get it done i can't even remember why but i was scrambling to get it done and so i stopped filming about halfway through but if you are interested in seeing what i did a little bit more you can just drop me a comment and i might put something together to kind of go over this a little bit more so i said it's got two or four total 20 amp circuits. And then I've got a 220 here for my joiner and a 220 over there for my joiner. I need to install another 220 outlet for my welder. It is a dual voltage machine, uh, but I really want to run it on 220 rather than on 110. So I'll be doing that at some point. Also back here, I have my dust collector. This is an Oneida mini gorilla. I bought it, one of the few used tool purchases I've been able to make. For whatever reason, there's not a huge selection of good used tools in the Kansas City area. So I ended up, um, I was in the market for a DeWalt 735 planer and the planer and the dust collector came up as a package deal on Craigslist one day. Message guy right away, went out there in like an hour and picked it up and it was a really good deal. That thing was initially on a rolling stand and it was always in the way. I hated it. It was driving me crazy all the time. So it's like, it's not really supposed to be ducted, but I was like, screw it. It's going to drive me mad. So I went ahead and installed it up on the wall. As you can see, I've got the ductwork coming up over here. It's not probably at optimal performance right now, just because you're not supposed to have long duct runs in here. And I, with this dust collector, and I've probably got 
eh, 20 feet of, of runs that you know puts a little strain on it and it does an okay job and it didn't do it didn't do a great job when it was mobile so i don't really feel like i've lost a ton of performance but that's definitely something i want to upgrade down the road it has a hard ducted line to my table saw and then everything else just hooks up to this rockler expandable hose it'll get most of the way across my shop so i've got a couple tools over there the bandsaw and the router table and then i can pull the planer out i usually work with it right around here and so it reaches everything really easily joiner as well when i want to use a joiner just slide it out hook it up that's good. Uh, speaking of the joiner, uh, this is my joiner. It's a Steel X ST1011. Um, for those of you who don't know, Steel X is part of the same company as Grizzly. Steel X and Shopbox, they sell only through dealers. Uh, whereas Grizzly, you can just go, you can buy it directly from them and they don't sell through dealers. The main difference between Grizzly and Steel X and Shopbox is that, from what I can tell at least, you get a two-year warranty with Steel X and Shopbox versus one year with Grizzly. Not sure why they do that, but that's the way it is. Um, this is a clone of the Grizzly G0490X, I believe is what it is. It's an eight-inch joiner. It has a spiral cutter head and it has parallelogram tables. When I bought this, I was looking around, trying to find something used, couldn't find anything used. The more research I did, everyone says, get an eight inch joiner, get an eight inch joiner. And after looking around, I finally decided, you know what, I've bought smaller, less capable tools in the past and I've regretted it almost instantly. I'm just gonna buy this. Hopefully it's the only joiner I'll ever own. All right, working our way around. Uh, you can see my little shot back dust collection cart. This is modified version of Jay Bates' little dust collection cart. This thing's really handy. I'm so glad I made this. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I hate shop backs. They, if you're, when you're rolling them around, they just seem to always get tangled in their cord or in the hose and they're just really annoying. I don't know why. Uh, having it like this takes up a lot less room. Uh, it's just easier to maneuver. So I like that a lot. I'm really glad I built that. And then over here is my welding table and my welder. Haven't done any welding or any metal working on this channel yet, but it's something that I'm planning on doing more of this year. I made that purchase probably sooner than I planned on. Uh, Lincoln Electric was running a special on this welder. It's the PowerMig 210 MP. At the end of November last year, they were running a special. It was basically 30, it was 500 bucks off. It was 33% off. So I figured, screw it, I'll go ahead and get it. Um, I know, I knew I, that was the welder I was going to get. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on it. And I'm glad I did. It's a great welder. It does MIG, uh, TIG, and stick welding. 110 and 220. Um, haven't used it a ton, just practice stuff more than anything. Super excited to do more metalworking. Um, I did some back in high school uh, and I loved it and I can't wait to do more. Um, it's on a clutch welding cart. Clutch is a uh, Northern Tools kind of house brand, uh, I believe. And then this is a, I believe it's also a clutch welding table. When I got the welder, I kind of went crazy at Northern Tool and just bought a whole bunch of welding crap. So I should be set there for a while. Um, other, you know, some clamps and maybe a grinder or two. But uh, like I said, really excited to, to do more welding and uh, hopefully do some projects I can put on my channel. All right, coming around the shop. This is kind of a tool wall I've thrown together pretty haphazardly. These are gladiator tracks. I bought them initially for hanging like gardening tools and brooms, shovels, things like that. They work awesome for that. They're really good for that. But for this setup, they just take up a lot of room. At some point, hopefully in the next month or two, this stuff will be coming down and moving over here. Also closer where I spend most of the time that I work. Um, over here, they're, it's kind of annoying having them over here. But it's mainly nailers drills drivers flashlights some hardware jigsaw some squares some other stuff like that i have my dewalt uh, tough system boxes over here uh, i was flipping a house last year and these came in super handy i took my tools back and forth a lot before it was just in like you know those crappy bags you get with tools these days and boxes and stuff like that so getting this was super handy i'm really glad i did it up here is my mini split uh, if you haven't seen i did a video on installing this. I'll go ahead and put a card up top. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out. One of the best decisions I've made is to install this thing. I live in the Midwest. It gets really freaking hot here and really cold. So installing this has made the shop much more comfortable in the summers and the winters. What sucks is my ceiling is not insulated, so it doesn't do a great job yet. One of these days I might insulate that, but it's kind of a disaster up there and I haven't really Decided to dip my toes into that just yet. This whole wall actually was called Hoover board. That's pretty much what the whole garage was before I got in here. And um, it was like this fiber 
paper fiber material, uh, similar to sheetrock, not similar to sheetrock, but what they used to use as sheetrock, I guess. I ripped all that down and re-insulated this. And then when I did the electrical over here and tore out that cabinet, I insulated that. So the walls are insulated really well. It's just the ceiling that's, that's bad. And then right below that is my little uh, Craig jig jig makes it easier than you know using scraps on each side to try to balance boards and stuff on it and then obviously my chargers and all that so further down this wall this is the workbench that i initially built over there i think it was last year sometime I ended up moving it over here better location over here although i don't use it a ton it's mainly it's usually covered in crap i actually kind of cleaned up a little bit today before doing this video but down below i have uh, my track saw my biscuit joiner some older tools and just a bunch of crap tool accessories torque wrench some camera gear this whole wall with any luck in the next six months or so i will be building a miter saw station for storage more than anything else i I'm severely lacking storage in this shop. Building, you know, a big bank of cabinets here with a place for my miter saw to live will be huge for the shop. I really need more storage. And it's gonna be a focus of my channel this year is storage, because I'm gonna be building a lot of it. So last summer sometime, um, back on the lack of storage thing, I came in here one day and all of this stuff was just down on this bench and there's stuff over that we'll get to later that was kind of just strewn all over the place. And I, I said, screw it, just start making something get it up on the wall, get it up off of the benches. So I started ripping down pieces of plywood and pocket holing them to the wall. The wall over here and this wall right here are plywood. So I can just pocket hole stuff to it all day long and it works great. I mean, I got quite a bit of stuff on there and it's not going anywhere. So that's actually worked really well and I've done it a ton in my shop on mainly on this, on this other wall. So what I have on here is just batteries, my sander, a mallet that I made, and then my hand planes, which I don't use a ton of. I mean, if you watch my channel, I I'm, haven't been building a ton of furniture or anything, but it's something that, again, down the road, I hope to do more of. I got the low angle jack plane. It's a Lee Nielsen number 62. Uh, I got that for Christmas last year. And then the other planes here, it was a funny story. I was on a forum and I started asking questions about planes, what I should get, you know, all that kind of stuff. And one gentleman was like, hey, I've got some older ones that I've restored. They're yours if you want to just pay for shipping. So I sent him a few bucks and he sent me three planes, which was pretty awesome. So whoever the hell you are, thank you. All right, down here I have uh, obviously some lumber storage and I have my planer. It's the DeWalt 735 that I can just roll out like this and plug it in and be ready to go. It's supposed to be the best lunchbox planer you can get and it works really well. I have had no problems with it so far. Um, my only issue with it is that it's small. I've done quite a few cutting boards where I would have liked to have the ability to plane something, you know, 15, 16 inches wide. Probably my next planer purchase is gonna be a big old 20 inch planer, and that'll be the last one I ever, I ever own, probably, hopefully. Uh, behind there, I've got some plywood that I have stored over there. And then obviously up here, just all kinds of random wood. This thing is my trailer. It's a fold-up trailer. It's pretty awesome. I have an SUV, so getting lumber, especially plywood and stuff like that, is pretty cumbersome. So bought this trailer. Um, you buy them as a kit, put it together yourself, put some plywood decking on it. It unfolds and hooks up to your car in five minutes, and it's four by eight, so you can go get full sheets of plywood, no problem. It's been super handy. I really, really love it. You know, I live, I don't live in the country or anything. I live in the somewhat suburbs and, you know, don't really have anywhere to put a 10 foot trailer or something like that. So having this that I can just store right here has been great. Really recommend it to anyone who's kind of in the same situation as I'm in. This is my scrap wood storage cart. I built this last summer. There's a video on that. If you haven't seen it and are interested, I'll link a card up there. Um, this thing is handy as hell. I'm really glad I built it. Uh, it was a design that I found in either fine woodworking or popular woodworking or some woodworking magazine. Um, modified it a little bit, but it's four feet wide and two feet deep and has room for, as you can see, a, a ton of cutoffs. So it's been really handy before i had scraps and trash cans that i just kind of drag around and have to dig through this way i know everything i've got and it's really accessible and it moves really easily like i said live in the midwest we get crappy weather we get you know ice and frost and stuff in the winter 
you got to scrape off your car in the mornings and then in the summers and spring and fall obviously we get thunderstorms which can bring hail so i like to bring in my car in those situations this moves over there this moves over there table saw and assembly table roll out of the way and i can do all that in two or three minutes and get my car in here um, in fact last summer i was on my way home from work and beat a hailstorm home and was able to Get the car in before it got hailed on this is the router table and cabinet that i just built made a video of it published it last week i will uh, link it in above if you're interested in it i haven't even used the router table yet though <laughs> i do have some stuff coming up where i will so i'm really glad that i built this um again mostly because of storage i can store all of my router bits router accessories in here as well as my routers it's been very handy glad i built it all right moving along this way this is where the garage doors are this is my bandsaw it is a win 10 inch bandsaw when i bought this i hated it was so angry i bought it it did not work worth the crap then i put a new blade on it and it works great you know it's a 10 inch bandsaw so it's pretty small but for what it is capable of handling size wise it does a really good job the blade that came on it was absolute junk i couldn't cut anything I, nothing it was i hated it so much i was looking at getting a new bandsaw because i just couldn't get it to cut right i followed the alex snodgrass bandsaw setup video and nothing worked and then i ended up getting a wood slicer from highland woodworking i think is what it's called and it's awesome uh, I think it comes with like a quarter inch or a three eighths inch blade. This one is a half inch blade and it does great. I love it. I, I'm perfectly happy with this bandsaw again for what it is. It's not a, you know, 17 inch bandsaw that you can do a bunch of resawing on. So I'm not even going to compare it to that. You know, it runs, it works great. It's got decent dust collection. It was like 240 bucks, I think. So it's been a good value. Uh, I actually, I have quite a few WEN tools and I've gotten quite a few comments on it in my videos. Overall, I have had no issues with WEN tools. They are on the cheaper side. So, and you can get them on Amazon. And if you have Prime, they'll be here in two days. So they're super easy to get. But yeah, no issues with them so far. Uh, this is my lawnmower. It's a Husqvarna. It's awesome. I hate that it's in here. Moving on. This is a cabinet that is just full of crap uh lawn and garden tools a bunch of dust collection hose yeah, i don't even know what else is in there let me look i'm um, a weed eaters in here um oil grease some tarp yeah stuff that really is of no interest to anybody all right lots of stuff going on on this wall over here uh main thing being my what was supposed to be temporary when I built it, Meyer saw station. And it wasn't even supposed to have these drawers, but when I saw it finished and I just kind of had like a internal webbing frame or something, I was like, hey, that's a spot for some drawers. So built four drawers. They're all different size. So it looks really awesome. Really proud of that. It's got a stop block and uh, what do you call the things with numbers on it? Rulers, adhesive ruler. So I can make some pretty accurate repeatable cuts. It's pretty handy. Obviously my drill press is right here with the drill press table that I have a video on. If you're interested, again, I'll link it above. Uh, this thing has been great. I'm really glad that I built this. Makes using the drill press a lot easier in a lot of circumstances. Uh, the drill press itself, again, it's a win. A 12 inch variable speed. So rather than messing with belts up in here, you just move this crank. It's worked great for me. I have had no issues with this drill press at all. One thing that worries me is after I bought it, I did some more research and apparently the variable speed thing can kind of be an issue. It's something that can break on these types of drill presses, but like I said, no, no issues so far. So happy with that. Uh, this is my Incra Miter 5000. This thing's rad. Love it. You know, I had a, a homemade um, miter sled before. Rockler, I believe, was running a sale. It's like a hundred bucks off or something. So uh, I went ahead and pulled the trigger and it's great. It, the arm extends out to, God, I want to say like 60 inches or something. So it can, it can handle a lot of, uh, you know, bigger stock and I love it. it it's, it's really great, super fine adjustments on it. Like I said, it was on sale, so I bought it. And if you're trying to sell anything, if you put it on sale, I'll buy it more than likely. On down the wall, uh, again, these are this is more of that stuff I was talking about, just pocket holing stuff to the wall. Uh, as you can see, I've got clamp racks and Forstner bit rack. Anything below it? Oh yeah, some drill bit stuff. We'll get over there in a second. Further down this wall, uh, my miter saw. It is the Bosch Glide 12 inch miter saw. 
it's the one that has the kind of articulating arm. So it doesn't take up near as much space as the kind that have the rails going out the back. I replaced a 10 inch Craftsman non-sliding miter saw with this and it takes up almost the same amount of space. I have a picture of it that I'll put up, but I think it maybe the, the Craftsman stuck out to about right here and this one sticks out to right here. This thing's awesome. The dust collection sucks. It's terrible. I have added this little cardboard shoot thing to try to help it but it just it's non-existent when i was doing research on this some of the people said that it's got some of the best dust collection of any of the miter saws out there and i call extreme bullshit on that unless they're all just horrific because this one is pretty awful when i build my miter saw station over there it's going to get enclosed hopefully we won't have to worry about that as much after that tv very important put it in last summer super glad i did can watch reruns of Donahue, so that's awesome. Uh, again, clamps, a bunch of clamps, um, squares, see here, screwdrivers, chisels, and more clamps. These are Harbor Freight clamps. Those are Bessie clamps. These are bad, those are good. When I first started woodworking, I went to Harbor Freight and just kind of bought up everything I could find that was woodworking related just to kind of get started. You know, you can buy half that store for like 150 bucks. So I did that and while these are they're, i shouldn't say they're bad they're okay the longer they are the really the worse they get for these f style clamps the short ones are okay but these long ones they just flex way too much way too much so i started buying the bessies and honestly they're not that much more money you can get a four pack at home depot two 12 inch two six inch for 20 bucks they go on sale for 15 quite a bit these are like six and the short one, the, the 12 inches are like three bucks a piece. So it's not a whole lot more to, to upgrade to the Bessie. And I would highly recommend it. They're so much better than, than these Harbor Freight ones. Another workbench that I have that's just got a bunch of stuff underneath of it. Under, underneath of it. Under it. I will, when I do the Meyer saw station, this will be getting replaced and turn into hopefully a home for my sanders, my drill press, and one other thing I can't remember right now. But, uh, you know, for a two by four and plywood workbench, you know, it does what it's supposed to do, I guess. Um, what do I have down there? Some clamps, some screws, that's about it. All right, so this is where I spend 95% of the time that I spend here in the shop. This is my assembly table right here, which I have a video, link up above, you know the drill. And then just an assortment of stuff, Craig jigs, screws, drill bits, Craig hardware, glue, um, there's painting stuff. It's just a mishmash of all kinds of crap. My very next project, I'm actually working on design right now. This is going to get replaced with a bunch of cabinets, both base and uppers, and then some shelves up here. And there's gonna be a kind of a cordless tool, charging station, sandpaper holders, paint and finish stuff. It's gonna be awesome. Tune in, swear, it's gonna be great. More clamps over here. Uh, I threw this clamp rack together really quick one day cause they were on the floor and on my table and all over the place. I need to get them out of there. On the left there are Bessie K-Body Revo clamps. Those are awesome, love them. Funny thing about that, last year would have been holidays of 2017 to 2018, Walmart screwed up on their listing and was listing a pair of 24 inch Revos for 40 bucks. They're 45 um, for one. So they ended up standing by it and I got eight, I think, total is what I ended up buying. Um, and then the rest over there, a bunch of quick clamps. Uh, again, the the Irwin quick, quick clamps are great. The Harbor Freights are pure junk. They just apply no pressure at all. They're worthless. I will probably end up getting rid of them very quickly. So a little quirky thing about this house, and for some reason in this neighborhood in the 50s, people did not like having the stairs to their basement inside the house. So the stairs to my basement are right on the other side of this wall, which this wall was not a wall. When I moved in, it was a railing and I put up the wall and put plywood up and that door right there goes into my kitchen and laundry room. And I didn't like this at first. When I first moved in, I thought it was stupid, super handy. 
I can store all kinds, all kinds of crap down there and go down and get it really easily. And I don't track stuff through the house. I'm drying some walnut slabs down there right now. While I didn't like it at first, it's been pretty cool. So I'm, I don't know why they did it like that, but I dig it. What else on this wall? Uh, oh, I have my, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe see the bottom of it. This is a Wynn air filter. This is another one of those tools where they sell it under the like 10 manufacturers names. And I don't have an air quality meter in here or anything like that, but the filter gets dirty. So I assume it works. One of these days, I kind of want to do like a big J Bates dust collection system, filters, air quality monitor, all that kind of stuff. And we'll see how it does then. But for now, I just turn it on when I'm working and let it run for a few hours after I'm done for the evening. Over here as well, I have my air compressor. It is a California Air Tools 10 gallon. These things are quiet, really quiet. I'm really glad I bought it. I had originally bought a rigid pancake compressor, brought it home, turned it on to do its um, kind of break in that they have you do. I think you run it for like 30 minutes. I turned it on, I went in the backyard, I could hear it. And my neighbor is eh, 15 feet that way. So I know they could hear it. So I boxed it right up and sent or took it back and got this, uh, this California Air Tools and it's quiet. I'll go ahead and turn it on and you have no frame of reference for noise in here, but it's pretty quiet. Other than a little piece of plastic that's rattling, it's pretty quiet and hopefully you can hear me okay and I'm not lying. Yeah, so really glad about that. What else do we have in here? Um, so we have one tool. No, actually, we have a couple. Um, so I store my sanders down here. So I guess I'll go ahead and pull them out. Yeah. So these are two of my sanders. This is a four by 36 belt sander again from when belt and disc sander. So there's disc sander right here is belt sander right here. And then this is a, an oscillating spindle sander also from when this works really well. This is just really tiny. I, this is one of those tools that I use it quite a bit and it does a really good job for what it is, but it's just so small. I would like to get something bigger, but in this shop, I don't know about that. It's pretty tight in here. This works really well. I probably, if I had to do it over again, rather than getting these two, I would just get the rigid oscillating belt spindle sander combo thing. That thing gets rave reviews and it would take the place of both of these machines. But these are also really cheap. I think this is like 80 bucks on Amazon and this is like 110. Again, 10 different manufacturers make these. They're the exact same thing. I even think this is the same as the Harbor Freight belt disc sander, but I'm not sure about that. I don't know if this is, I can't remember. That's kind of the story of when in a nutshell is for me at least, they've been really good for what they are, but what they are is minimal tools. They're not very, very big. They don't have a lot of capacity. For what they are, they've, they've done a good job. And like I said, I got a lot of people that reach out in comments and ask me about when tools. I've had people email me and ask me about when tools. So Leave a comment down below if you would like me to do like a full, I don't want to say review, but kind of a, my thoughts on all of these tools. Although I did talk about them quite a bit right now, so maybe that's not necessary. Like these live underneath on the bottom shelf of my assembly table. The assembly table was kind of my uh, first big shop project and it's been awesome, but it could be so much better. I put a vise on it, which has been nice, but I have this huge space down here that could be a lot of storage that it's just a shelf. One of these days I'll probably replace it with something that's got drawers and, and more, um, more storage, uh, like that. Now we have one more tool left and it's my favorite tool in my shop. So let's take a look at it. My table saw. This is a saw stop contractor saw with the 36 inch, T-glide fence. This is the, not the fence that comes standard on these. It's an upgrade. Love this thing. When I bought this, I was started out looking, debating between the Cobalt job site saw and the DeWalt job site saw. So my budget was about mm, $300. After more research and a lot of gut wrenching, 
I settled on the, or I, I wanted to look at the saw stop job site saw. So I went to Woodcraft and got upsold, like I'm capable of having done, to this. While I love this saw, I regret buying it because, so I made some upgrades to it. Um, I got the mobile base, I got the dust collection attachment, I got the fancy fence. Once that kind of starts adding up, you're getting really close to the cost of the professional cabinet saw. And I did not get the cast iron wings, which I really wish I would have. I do not like these stamp steel wings. They're hard to keep clean. They're just, I don't like the undulation. They're not flat. So I looked into buying the aftermarket uh, saw stop cast iron wings for this. And they're like, it's like 300 bucks or so. And I started thinking about like, gosh, that's really close to what you would be for the 36 inch 1.75 horsepower uh, professional cabinet saw from saw stop. So I was like, darn, that kind of sucks. I wish I would have thought about that before. Maybe if I would have gone in wanting to buy this, I would have been upsold to the professional, which would have been really cool. But alas, I was upsold this. And like I said, I like it. What I don't like about it is the mobile base only goes this way. It does not, you can't go this way. The way it that fits with this table, it's kind of a pain to move it. Having the motor hanging off of the back kind of sucks. It interferes with this table and stuff. So uh, it just takes up a bigger footprint. And the dust collection is not great but it's kind of par for the course for a contractor saw. Um, it gets most of it, the dust collector gets most of it, but a lot of it ends up down underneath here. Whereas if it was a cabinet saw, it would end up in the cabinet. Now you'd still have to clean that out every now and then, but I just didn't want it on the floor or uh, you know floating around the shop. So while I do love this saw, it cuts awesome. I have a forest, not a forest, yes. Forest Woodworker 2 blade on here that I just recently got. And it does some cutting. I love it. Um, I honestly, I haven't come across anything that I can't cut. I work with, um, you know, eight quarter walnut, eight quarter maple, and it hasn't had any problem with that yet. So I, I would have no problem upgrading to the professional with the 1.75 horsepower uh, motor in it. And I think I'd be fine. I did change out the well i converted it to 220. why because i could i was bored figured i i can't remember what it costs i think it was like 70 or 80 bucks to get the different contactor box and i had a 220 owl installed over here and i was like screw it i'll do that so i did that and i really can't tell much of a difference um hmm. i think i'm done i talked for a while All right, that is a wrap on this shop tour. Thank you all for sitting here and watching me yap for, I don't know what the final runtime of the video is gonna be, but I guess I've been out here for about an hour. So we'll see, hopefully it's not too horribly long and you all click away really quickly. Uh, if it's your first time here and you enjoyed me being me, um, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you'd like, I'd appreciate that. If you have any questions about any of the tools, any of my layout decisions, anything like that, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Be happy to answer any of them. I'll have links to the majority of the tools that I use uh, in the description, as well as in an article on my website, where I'll kind of go probably a little bit more in depth on some of the various tools, but there'll be a link to that in the description as well. Hmm, I guess that's it. All right, until next time, good day.